Hello everyone. This video walks through completing Packet Tracer Assignment 5.2.2.7, Configuring Switch Port Security. This Packet Tracer Assignment is a part of the Cisco RNS version Routing and Switching Essentials Version 6 curriculum. Now, in this particular lab, we've got uh, PC1 and PC2 connected to switch 1. And the main thing we want to learn in this lab is how our switch learns our CAM table or our MAC address table. Basically, just like a router has a routing table, when we do show IP route, it knows how to get to all these destination networks. Remember, routing takes place at layer 3, so it cares about the network addresses. Well, switching regular switches um, operate at layer two, unless it's specifically a layer three switch that does both, but this is a layer two switch. Um, and it um, cares about MAC addresses. So it cares about delivering, it needs a table to say, hey, what is PC1's MAC address? So that when I get something in for PC1 or for this specific MAC address, I know to send it out of this specific interface. Same way a router, again, knows what networks are connected off of different interfaces, okay? So it's all about that in-device delivery or at least getting it to the right location. So we're going to learn how the, do switches learn about that and also how can we affect its learning process, almost like we do with routing, okay? So here we've got switch one and we want to access the command line. And it says to enable switch port security uh, or port security on FA01 and 2. Now, I'm going to show you a command, again, the interface range command, because we're doing, if you want to do something the same, and I mean exact same, it cannot be one letter difference uh, or one configuration difference on two different ports or more than two. It can be a lot of range, um, even broader than just these two. But if you want to do them the same, use the interface range command and then put your ports one through two, okay? So we're going to first enable port security. So we're going to switch port, port dash security is the command that turns it on, okay? Then I'm going to hit an up arrow so I don't have to type that back in. And in B is set the maximum so that only one device can access it. So if you do a question mark here, you see our different configurations and we're going to use all of them. So we're going to do max one. Okay, so that means that S1 for, for port 1 and port 2, which PC1 is plugged into port 1, PC2 is plugged into port 2, it's only going to learn um, one MAC address. It's only allowed to learn one in its MAC address table. You know, it could learn more than one if you disconnect this and could flip flop their connections and things like that. Technically, it would have to learn about another end device, right? But here, we're going to set it where the max can be only one. Next, in C, it says secure the port so that the MAC address of the device is learned dynamically and add it to the configuration. So to do that, we're going to do MAC address. And here, you could either set it to say, hey, you're only going to know this MAC address, but we're going to do sticky. What that means is it's going to dynamically learn about these MAC addresses, okay, as it passes through. So if PC1 starts sending stuff across S1, it's going to learn it based off the frame at layer 2 in that OSI model. It has your MAC address. It's going to learn the source MAC address for PC1 is XYZ, right, or blah, 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 what, you know, insert MAC address here. Um, and it's going to stick it to that port in its MAC address table. Now, because of what we set before, it's only going to be able to learn one because we put the max at one, okay? So now we're going to set a violation. So what happens when it tries to learn more than one or it has to be in that situation? So we're going to set a violation. There's three violation rules. you got protect, restrict, and shut down. And they each operate differently. You can look in Netacad and the curriculum to see which one kind of obviously shut down. If it tries to learn one, boom, it just turns the port off. It basically sends the shutdown command and it is not operational at all. Restrict basically sets it um, that your port is not disabled, but packets are dropped. So the port light will still be green, but it's not going to send any anything across. Protect basically sends you a message to say, hey, it's learned about something else, but packets are not all dropped. So what we're going to do is it says it's not disabled, but packets are dropped. So that's actually the restrict one. So let's say violation restrict. That's the method we're going to choose for that. And now to kind of harden the switch, because we've only got two ports, well, this only applies to two of them. 
like this rogue laptop down here can technically connect to port FA03 and it's up and running. So what we want to do is we're going to exit out and we're going to do interface range FA03 through 24. We're using one and two. So three through 24, because I know it's a 24 port switch, I'm actually going to do shut down and disable all of those commands. So again, it was interface range FA03 through 24. And then after you hit enter, I did shut down to shut them all off. Okay, because we don't need to use them. That's um, leaving yourself open. Also, we've got two G01 through two ports that we want to do the shutdown command on as well to make sure those are not um, operational either. Okay, sometimes G00 and G01, you just want to make sure that you check. If you ever usually hover your mouse over your device, it'll come up with a long list. I think I have it off in preferences, but you can always turn it on under your options and preferences and packet tracer. Okay. All right, now we want to try this stuff out, okay? We've only got 86 out of 100, but our configurations are actually all correct. What we need to do is, because of what we set, we need the switch to actually learn about these MAC addresses. So how do we do that? We ping, we force it to use it. So you can either use this um, to ping back and forth, okay? Or you can actually type in the ping command. I'm gonna use this, okay, from place to place. Okay, you see our connection says successful over there. Um, let me move that over. Okay, you see it says successful, then we'll ping back from PC2 to PC1, okay? So it has learned our MAC address, okay? Now, if we go here and do a show MAC address table, oh, I might have typed something in wrong, show, Ah, it's three dashes there. Okay. Okay. You see right here it says FA01 is learn my MAC address for that, and FA02 is learn my MAC address for that. Now you can always check your MAC address on a real computer by going to desktop, command prompt, and on a real Windows computer you can do git mac forward slash v. That does not work in Packet Tracer, but that will give you your MAC address for every. Uh, network card that you've got, Wi-Fi or wired. But here we can do a IP config forward slash all and it will also give you your MAC address. So it'll say physical address. So here this matches this one right here, right? So PC1, FA01, connected there, it learned about it. And then PC2, same deal. IP config forward slash all And you see right here, it shows your MAC address right here. Okay, FA02, right there. Okay, now it has you attach the rogue laptop to any unused port and see if it's red. So let's try and make a connection. Copper straight through, FA0 to any of them. You can choose seven, eight, whatever. You see it's red. Obviously, we turned all of them off, so it's not going to give any type of connection. Okay. Let's delete that one. Now, it tells you disconnect PC2. So I'm going to grab that and connect it to the rogue laptop. I'm going to fast forward time a little bit. And it says... Um, Verify that it's unable to ping it. So I'm going to try to ping from rogue laptop to PC1, and you see it continues to say failed here, right? So it shows a link like it's still green. If I would have put the violation mode as shut down, it would actually turn that link like to red. Um, but again, it's not able to ping. What about if I connect it back to PC2? And again, it's not able to ping because remember, it only could learn one MAC address, it's already learned PC2s. So I'm going to fast forward time again, <clears throat> and I'm going to ping from PC2 to PC1, and boom, you see it's back working. So it will not allow this to ping because I've already learned one MAC address for FA02. So again, we've got 100 out of 100. That kind of explains why you do port security, how you do it, and how it reacts. All right.